never want to miss one of my videos, then make bloody sure you click the notification bell. Yeah. We were all young once, and whilst the youth of today waste their gaming time on terrible iPad games and mobile apps, I, on the other hand, enjoyed something much more sophisticated. Going to the arcade was an event to cherish, rather than a poorly timed in-app purchase. So join me whilst we go back in time and look at some of the best cabinets the arcade had to offer. Yeah! Castlevania. This Japanese gaming series is one of Konami's most popular franchises ever. The hit series has spawned countless entries stretching back to the mid 1980s right up until the current day. The series in fact offers so much choice and fun that you could probably spend every night having a horrible curse for a whole entire year if you liked. The Castlevania titles on the NES were amongst some of the most popular titles for the system over in North America and the impact of this can still be felt today considering most retro gaming YouTubers never seem to shut up about those ones. However, did you know there was also an exclusive arcade Castlevania game available during this time frame too? Haunted Castle is the first of two Castlevania arcade games, both of which have a pretty low-key presence overall within the modern day YouTube echo chamber of content. Haunted Castle saw a release in the arcades across North America, Europe and Japan and was known as Aku Meiju Dracula in its homeland of the Orient. Am I even pronouncing that right? Haunted Castle was the fourth game to be released within the Castlevania series. Following the first Castlevania game on the NES, Vampire Killer on the MSX microcomputer and Castlevania Simon's Quest. Outside of the arcade, the game interestingly also saw a release on the PlayStation 2 as well. However, this was only part of a compilation disc and remained exclusive to Japan. At the beginning of this game, you are treated to a delightful cutscene where Simon Belmont has just married Selena and they are just blissfully walking away from the church. Although you will notice just yards from the front door of said church, Dracula appears in the sky, swoops down and kidnaps the screaming Selena. Hmm, where have I seen this in an arcade game before? It looks a bit familiar. Anyway, within a few short seconds, you are instantly transported into the first level, where Simon is suddenly brandishing his signature Mr. Grey Whip, and of course wearing skimpy armour with nothing else to cover his clearly roided body. If this game was released nowadays, I'm sure there'd be an SJW in the shadow somewhere, ready to jump out screeching about how this is unfair representation of the masculine physique, or some other nonsense like that. However, these were the days when little boys were being sold He-Man toys, so all was still good back then. Now, for those of you who are hardcore Castlevania fans, you will probably already be aware of this title. Some of you may have played it too, I suppose. I've played it and I can confirm it is bastard hard. But then again, it would have had to have been because, um, you know, arcade. This was designed to eat your money, so this is what you would have had to have put up with. Anything useful in this game is also all but non-existent. For example, there are no restorative items and very few additional weapons available. It also doesn't help that Simon Sprite itself is rather large and cumbersome. I found it particularly difficult at times to avoid enemy attacks, especially when they are bloody flying all around the screen. He also moves very slowly. In fact, he kind of looks and moves like a lot of the bodybuilders I had to share a ring with in my wrestling past, in which I used to be able to run rings around, yeah. For a game released in 1988, Along with most of the arcade counterparts of games during that time period, this game looks bloody fantastic. There is a huge amount of detail and the title obviously looks far superior to anything available on the NES at the time. In fact, it wouldn't have looked out of place on the SNES I suppose. It fits in well with the Castlevania titles of that general time period, 
which is nice for followers of the series. The layout of the levels more or less guide you from point A to point B. There are a few other routes you can take, but ultimately you will end up needing to turn back around, bearing in mind how hard this game is, unless you know the correct way to go. One wrong turn can turn into a suicide mission, though I will point out that the levels are not difficult to navigate. Another way in which this game is very difficult is that as you progress through the game, the occasional weapon upgrade you need will be dropped by one and only one enemy per item. These remain the same throughout each playthrough, but if you accidentally miss one, you will end up in serious trouble. On the upside however, the bosses in this game aren't actually too difficult. Well, not in comparison to actually navigating your way through the levels to get to them in the first place. Provided you have the correct weapon equipped, you'll generally be able to defeat them in only a few hits. Their attack patterns are also easily learned. This means that when you're repeating the levels over and over, at least you will not necessarily get utterly obliterated at the end of the stage. Overall, this is a game which is well worth naming, if like me you don't have access to a coin guzzling cabinet. In fact, it can actually be very rewarding to complete each level, and if you're patient and consistent, and actually manage to memorise the layouts of each level, then you can actually complete this game in less than 20 minutes. If, however, you're a more casual gamer, this might actually be one you may want to skip, as the difficulty can make the game very challenging at times. I would also advise that you don't try to treat this as a regular sort of platformer, as the character is too slow and too big to be able to jump out of the way of enemies and stuff like that. But then again, this is a Castlevania game, and that's kind of part of its charm. This game should be considered to some degree kind of a rite of passage for hardcore Castlevania gamers. Or maybe, I suppose, a bit of a pain in the ass for anyone else. So, that was Haunted Castle, the Castlevania 1988 arcade game. Thank you for watching today's video. What do you believe to be the most underrated Castlevania game? And which arcade games would you like to hear me talk about on this channel? Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you are new to this channel, do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. There is an abundance of content just like this to be found here, including an in-depth video I produced on Castlevania handheld games, which I shot at Dracula's Castle in Transylvania last year. In other news, I, along with my new co-host, Luke Street, have launched a chat show channel known as Top Hat Chat. So please subscribe and give us some support over there too. Finally, we have also launched Top Hat Chat on Twitch Saturday nights as well. So join us for six hours every single Saturday night from 9pm UK time onwards. Come and join us in my games room and watch us play and discuss a number of retro games using actual system hardware. Yeah. So remember to find us at Top Hat Chat on YouTube and Top Hat Chat on Twitch too. Shout outs to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kabayashi, Minty Oblivion, Victor Rain, Synth Spaces, Kevin Fahili, David Mountford, Andrew Bazanski, Atanas Garcia, Edward O'Reilly, Peter Dawn, Retail Archaeology, Diego Pereira Dos Santos Silva, and all of my other patrons. Combined, you all help me regularly find motivation to continue to churn out regular content. If you want to become like one of these helpful people, then I suggest you check out my Patreon page. You also get to be part of the regular Top Hat Q&As every month, so that's another incentive for me to get your money. Yeah! Cheerio!